today we have Sarah from Texas and we we will talk about uh, being a developer as a parent and she looks a little little bit like a superhero for me because for me parents are really the superheroes of our community how are you Sarah I'm doing well Francesco how are you doing yeah, I'm fine I'm fine thanks uh, it's just be yeah now I feel maybe a bit a bit more relaxed about this video calls this is actually our second try because uh, <laughs> we need to do to do something a little bit better so w- welcome again uh, yes yeah, so we would like to to listen to your story about how you do become a developer and then I'll make some random questions maybe during your, your story and then we'll talk about our main topic a little bit about socials and please fo- follow Sarah on Twitter we, I'll, we, I'll post the link behind and we'll say this again later. <laughs> Great. Right. So, um, you know, growing up, I, um, my mom built computers and my uncle was a software developer and he had his own company. He had a huge warehouse filled with computers and different parts for it. And so I was just always around computers growing up and my mom would build her, she built me a PC. Typing class was my favorite class in elementary school. And just growing, growing up, I, I, you know, was just around that a lot. And so when I started recruiting, which was my first professional job with, I uh, recruited for customer service reps and we were, I started a blog about it and I used WordPress and I started working a little bit more with the code. And then after I did customer service recruiting, I was hired on to do IT recruiting by an agency. And so during that time, I learned a lot of the lingo, you know, ASP.NET, Java, JavaScript, just all the different things. And I didn't know what it was, but I would go home and I would research because I wanted to be able to find the best candidates. And I wanted to be able to talk about the technology like I under, like I knew what I was talking about. And so I would just go home and study all of those. And it was always fascinating talking to people and learning about what they were developing and what they were doing with, with the, the different languages that they used. And over time, I wanted to start doing that too, uh, but I didn't really have uh, the resources at that point. And so eventually uh, I got hired on by my husband's family company as a tech support uh, tech support rep. And I started getting into trying to find solutions for different things. And we had a lot of manual processes with email creation. We It's an online school. And so we were having to upload people to like Office 365 by Excel spreadsheets and just super manual. It took a very long time to do that. And so there was a systems administrator before I left and he had talked about PowerShell and I had no idea what it was. He helped me set it up on my computer. And we had an issue where we didn't want students to see each other's email addresses in the system. We didn't want students to be able to search for each other. And the only way that you could do that setting was with PowerShell. So I spent about two days trying to figure out how to do it. It was honestly one of the most complicated solutions that I've figured out. I don't know how I did it for the first time. Like when I, when I figured it out, I was so proud of myself. And then from then on, I started using PowerShell all the time and I built complex scripts for enrollment and I automated a ton of processes. And then after that, I started learning other languages based on other solutions that the company needed. So one of them was jQuery and we had a meeting and somebody was one of uh, an external party was like, well, somebody's got to learn how to do jQuery. Who's going to do that? And I, I said, I will. And so that kind of led me into my JavaScript um, and SQL development. And so that's what I do now is a lot of, uh, I would say some JavaScript. I'm going back to basics and relearning that right now, but also a lot of SQL, a lot of PowerShell, some PHP, you know, and of course HTML and CSS. So that's where I'm at now. And um, now I'm stepping back and going to a boot camp to really understand the basics because there's a lot of holes in my knowledge as a self-taught developer who works with a lot of different languages, you know. So I know a lot, but I'm not an expert in all of them. And I need, I'm, my goal is to change that right now. 
Yeah, and I th- yeah I th- I'm trying to figuring you out, uh, like try to to fight to fight with this PowerShell. I think th- th- this has been really a fight <laughs> with with that. Uh, you but, like yeah. PowerShell? Have you used it? Yeah, yeah, I've used it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I I can yeah. It, it's not it's not the easiest way to to approach the development. I think maybe you have chosen the the, the, the one of the worst ones. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, but yeah, but maybe yeah, and then um, the command line it's really yeah, it can be frustrating, but uh, also re- really satisfying when you really can do something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the neat thing about PowerShell is you can write a script and it also will uh, push out scripts of different languages. So I have a script in PHP and PowerShell will run that just fine. So it's a really powerful tool. And I know it doesn't really get that much love on Twitter. I personally think it's a lot of fun. I, w- I hope to connect with more people who know about it, but, um, but yeah. No, 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 it's good. No, I, I don't know it uh, very well because you basically I use Linux a job, but yeah, basically I use PowerShell a lot with Docker. Sometimes I okay. use that because I need mm-hmm. to use Docker only on Windows. And I've not, uh, sometimes I use uh, WSL just a different thing but sometimes i just use a uh, docker on windows and then in that case i use powershell and yeah for some needs yeah so thank you thank you so much for this experience and uh, uh, yeah so w- what about this uh, boot camp have you started yet or, or not yeah we've started it i'm a, i'm on the fourth sprint right now so we just <clears> did <throat> the basics of html and css and we had to build a responsive page which I learned a lot just from the basics of HTML that I didn't realize, like what a meta viewpoint tag is and why that's important. And just little things that I had not picked up yet, you know, as I was teaching myself. So it's been really great. And then uh, now we're working on JavaScript and then we'll build, we'll build an app and react here in the near future as well. So it's, it's, it's really challenging. Even the HTML and CSS was challenging. They taught a new methodology or me a new methodology called DEM, uh, block element modifier. And it took me about two weeks to really understand that. So I'm actually going to be blogging about that because it just huh. did not work in my brain. It took it forever to click. And now I finally have that down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been really great. I'm, I'm glad that I yeah. took the step to do that. Yeah. I, th- yeah, I think that, yeah, after you learn something to write a blog of a post about that, uh, it's really great because maybe in six months, uh, you'll need to, to check that again. And you can check that, uh, sometimes it happened to me many times that I've checked my own blog yeah. post and uh, yeah, it's like, it's like, uh, uh writing s- super comments, like, <laughs> so you write something and then you go back and check, uh, yeah. And not only that, I mean, sometimes it takes me three or four different blog posts when I'm looking up a concept and I'm trying to understand it. So writing it in a way that makes sense to me that might make sense to somebody else as well um, is one of the things that I want to do as a content creator because sometimes it, I have to read three different articles before I finally have the aha moment. And you know that can be, um, that can be challenging sometimes when you're trying to understand a concept. Yeah, yeah, but and, and which was your first blog post, uh, for example, when, when you wrote um, your first blog post? A lot. Well, my technically my first blog post was back over probably ten years ago, and that was oh. a recruiting blog. I don't even know where it is anymore. It's not online, probably. Recently, um, for IT, I I think it was about my boot camp. I wrote a blog about my boot camp and how, how you sign up for it and what to expect once you, um, once you register and everything. And then, uh, and then from there, I wrote a Twitter blog post and then I have a few in my mind that I need to get onto the computer soon. Perfect. And can I ask you, uh, where are you gonna post these, uh, this blog post? So my, my blog is called blog.shook.codes and it's posted through Hashnode. And then I've been cross posting to dev um, since okay. my last yeah. post. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in the future, I, I'll, I've interviewed two people uh, for, from Hashnode. So in the future, we will have them. I, I, I'm not going to spoil it now because I'm not, I don't know when, I, when I'll publish this. But uh, yeah, so I'll also have them. I think Hashnode is a really good platform to post your blogs really so like if Hashnode. you don't want to. If you don't want to build your own, uh, 
blog post, which of course we we, we all agree that <laughs> that's the best solution. But yeah, all, yeah, also is, yeah, is the best solution to build your own house. But sometimes we don't have time, <laughs> or or, don't, or not the the yeah the possibility. So in that case, I also suggest Hashanah usually. Yep. Yeah, hash node and dev because you can other developers can see your content versus hosting it on your own. If you're, you know, a 50,000 follow, if you've got 50,000 followers on Twitter or YouTube, you could maybe host it yourself. But someone little like me, I like I need that visibility from other people too. <laughs> yeah, well, so, but uh, yeah, but you have some followers now. How many followers on Twitter do you have? Um, over 5,000 right now. It's not, it's, not, it's not that bad, uh, in my opinion, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, thank you. Um, yeah, I also would like to talk about some something that I'm posted today because I, I I don't know if I can remember that that you if you have answered to that, uh, which is your best skill, uh, is that that you answered to that? Uh, I did. My I think my best skill is being able yeah. to pick up different languages very quickly. I can get in and you know. All, programming languages, the syntax might be different, but a lot of times their structure is the same. Um, so being able to just get in and get my hands dirty easily. I can't build something from scratch with those, but I can modify the code as needed and find a solution to get things working the way that, you know, my employer or whoever requests it to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. So, um, Okay, so um, what about your future plans? Uh, do you want to, where do you want to move? Because I also, yeah, I, I already know something, but uh, about, uh, yeah, let's talk of, of course about development. Uh, and yeah, and then we'll talk about parenting as developer, of course. Yeah, no, I, so to take a step back, you know, I joined Twitter um, because I'm the only developer at the company that I work at and I'm totally self-taught and I got tired of, I, I was suffering from imposter syndrome and I didn't have anybody to bounce ideas off of. I didn't have anybody to, to celebrate the small victories that you know you get from solving a complex coding problem. So I decided to just take a shot at Twitter and focus on the tech side of things and see what happened. And so at that time, my goal was literally just to start talking to other people and build relationships and maybe start putting myself out there. Um, I suffer from depression. so being able to talk to other people was really great for me. And I know social media and Twitter might not be everybody's go-to, you know, solution for overcoming it, but it really helped me because I was able to finally talk to people with like, like-mindedness, um, with similar skills. I was able to talk to people who knew more than me and I was able to help people who didn't know as much as me. So just overall joining Twitter, I met that goal of meeting, rela making relationships and meeting other people like you and you know all the other people that we talk to on a regular basis on there, you actually start to become friends. Um, so I didn't expect to have 5,000 followers after six months of joining Twitter. That wasn't my goal. But as I've increased followers and in and built those relationships, I really want to give back to the community. So my next step would be to do some content creation. And I've started blogging. I do want to do freelancing uh, development as well. But I really think that doing content um, would be a, a great opportunity for me and then a way to give back to the community as well. So I think that's kind of where I'm leaning towards going. And of course, that could change, but I feel really comfortable. And Six months ago, I would have never told you that answer, but that's where my head is going at this point. Yeah, thank you. I started this year with basically z zero uh, online presence. Uh, some people could try to, to, to look for me in, in 2019. Uh, yeah, and also I, I think that what we were saying that you want to give back to community, I think that this will be hard because for, for me, I'm trying to give back to community by making these videos and people keep helping me. So it's very hard to give back because I try to give back and the, the more I try to give back, the more I get help from people that they are they are helping me me with this YouTube channel with also saying that, this, that I'm getting better. So. I, I hope that you that you you managed to do great. that, but yeah, but yeah. It, it, it's it's very hard I, in my opinion to to really give back because uh, yeah. You, you, you but you are giving help. back. You just get help as well for doing what you're doing, and so it's yeah. a, a give and take thing, and that's that's the beauty of it, right? Um, you you are helping people, but in that you're finding help when you need it as well. So. 
yeah 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 so so sarah let's please uh, let's talk about your experience as um as a parent and uh, and the developer so a uh, parent and a developer can we, can we do the both the things uh, <laughs> how, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. how can you manage to do that because i i think that uh, we we have a, a lot of people that are actually maybe watching also this video so can, can, what can you say to them yes. uh, can you say your experience please so when i first started developing my um i so i have three children one six I have a two-year-old and I have a one-year-old. And when I first started developing, my daughter was about six months, one year. So it was actually really manageable with just one kid. It's when you add the others in the mix that it gets a little bit crazy and schedules um, have to be adjusted. You know, I know you're an early morning person and you get up every morning and go for a run. And I am not, I'm a night owl. I like to get my work done in the evenings and afternoons, but on top of that, I can't necessarily, during the day, I don't necessarily have time to code. Sometimes I can get half an hour in and other days I get nothing. There have been a couple of days this week that I've gotten over two hours of coding in and that was like a huge win um, for me because that's normally not the way it is. I homeschool my daughter. So she's um, at home, you know, during the pandemic, I just wanted to keep her safe and not have her exposed at school or anything. So I homeschool her, which takes a lot of time up. And then um, my two-year-old and one-year-old, you know, they, they constantly need attention. So I don't necessarily have a set schedule for coding. And I know a lot of parents, some parents can, and when my kids get older, I will be able to do that. But right now that's just not possible. So I take it one day at a time. I code as much as I can, usually in the afternoons and evenings. And um, I, it's just one of those things where some days I can't even open the computer and that's okay. And it makes me feel bad, but it is what it is. And I'm a mom first, always, you know, my kids are the most important and then coding second. So there's going to be plenty of time to focus on that later for now. I just take it day by day and I have my priorities. My priorities are my kids. And then my boot camp is the next priority. So that's what I'm working on you know, when I'm not parenting. And then if I get my, my assignments done with that, then I can do something else. I can do work, I can do personal projects, but um, it's about prioritizing what code needs to be done first, which right now for me is boot camp. Yeah, please uh, let me tell you that I admire you so much. So congratulations on that Thank because uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think that what you are doing now it will pay uh, a lot in the future because you are you are doing a lot of things. But yeah, maybe uh, you're doing the, in my opinion, you are doing the right things. That you, of course, you prioritize uh, your children, of course, uh, but you you try to use maybe five minutes, 10 minutes to, yeah, to to just code a little bit uh, instead of maybe just say, oh, maybe, maybe I'll code uh, next year or in next two years. I, I'm sure that these min minutes will, will yeah, will pay back uh, a lot in the future because you saw you you get a little bit uh, of the basics now and then i think in the future i hope that you will have more time and then uh, what you've started uh, yeah this year yeah will will be useful for you so yeah. in my opinion you are doing the best that you can do that's so, right it's another, it's, I recently started exercising again and I only get 10 minutes, but it's better to do five push ups a day than no push ups a day because over time you're still keeping your body a bit healthier, even though I wish I could have more time to exercise right now. But it's the same thing. You do a little bit consistently and that knowledge still gets solidified. And it's okay that I'm not fast tracking like others. There's going to be plenty of time to fast track later on when my kids are older. Um, so I think that's important for parents of young kids to know that just keep doing it and you'll get there. It's just enjoy your parenthood too, because your kids are going to grow up and, you know, you want to spend time with them while they're young. Yeah. yeah. I think that you are doing a, a really great job with time management. In my, in my opinion, for what you say, I think that you are doing your, really your best and also exercise. I don't, I don't know if you were exercising the other times that we did this interview, maybe, maybe not, or maybe you just started. I don't uh, yeah, that. I just started again this week after. Being yeah. Off oh, wow. So, oh, wow. So, so, so what, now we have the updated version. I'm happy about that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, that minutes can make the difference. Yeah. In the long run, 10 minutes, five minutes really can. So, yeah. Thank you. Good luck with that. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, thank you. So um, you said me something before starting that maybe you are about to to also work on videos. So you got some new equipment. Uh, I can't remember if you said that uh, some someone of your family they they created videos maybe. Or maybe my not. my dad has yeah. yeah he does it he does professional singing and um he used to do professional voiceover work so he actually has a professional studio set up in his home it's uh got a green screen and everything so that he doesn't do youtube videos which is one of the things that i want to start doing soon um is is that and i haven't decided exactly what my niche will be i have some ideas but i need to i need to sit down and figure that out I'd also like to start a podcast eventually. Yeah. I think that would be fun. Of course, yeah. If you want me as a guest, of course, I can't. I can't say you no. Know. So, so if you, if the day you that you invite me, I, I have to say yes. So now I am in the, this middle of challenge. I got so uh, I, I already people just saying this to me, but uh, when I'll end up this uh, this challenge, I'll go to anybody. So I'll say yes to anybody. Uh, yes, because in my opinion, I started with a run with a running video. So. I, in my opinion, the, the most important thing is to get started. The earlier you start, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm posting almost regularly, o- almost every day, this thing that, uh, I don't know, if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that. But uh, in my opinion, yeah, the most important thing is to get started with something and you can change uh, topic, uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah. So good luck, good luck with that. I Thank you. struggle because I've thought about uh, what vi- what video could I do for years. So so, so I, I really can understand you. Trust me. But yeah, yeah. So you yeah maybe you need uh, some inspiration. For example, for me it was Florin Pop gave me this idea to make videos to the running challenge. Then I and then I had this idea to transform this in a video. So maybe by but uh, in my opinion, if you talk to with people that have a YouTube channel maybe like me or maybe someone better than me, they can give you some ideas. So you can, they can, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> you can breathe the same air. So yeah, so yeah. this is this is the um, the opinion that I can give to you. And maybe I, I'll tweet this uh, one day, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, yeah. I uh, think that's great advice. Yeah, and you, your your channel has even... Uh, grown and you've grown as a as a as a interviewer so i'm a journalist now yeah i'm, yep. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a developer <laughs> but yeah are you, no. are you ever going to do coding videos yeah, yeah. or anything yeah yeah have you done them in the past what the? have you done coding videos yet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've done docker videos docker videos okay. for now i'm working on something else uh, yeah but uh, i'll go back on them don't worry, don't worry. I'll go back on that. I have some ideas, but I'm not gonna say them because I, when I say my ideas, the, the chances to do that, uh, yeah. And then I have to delete this video. I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So, um, what can you say? Okay, so what about parenting? Yeah, can we give some advice maybe to them? Because I'm sure that there are out there some parents that they are struggling with and they, 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 yeah, the most important things I, I think that they say, I have no time to do that. Uh, we, we know that it's not easy. I can't really understand that. Uh, sorry, but uh, may, of That's- course, of course you can. So maybe you can help maybe, of course, more than me. What can, can we say to them, please? Um, I would say, like I said earlier, take it one day at a time. Don't beat yourself up if you can't open the computer for three days, it will be there. And take five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes during the day if you do find that time to just work on one thing. It could be one HTML element that you need to edit or one style, you know, adding the CSS to one style or figuring out one small piece of the component in React, you know, that you're working, or the React app that you're working on. Um, and Enjoy being a parent because they're, your kids are going to grow up really fast and pri- figure out what is your priority is, 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 do you have something that like, um, do you have some other hobby that's taking up time when maybe you should focus on coding first and then do that if you have more time? I have other hobbies that I have put on the back burner because coding is more important. I want to give my kids a, a life that I didn't have growing up and 
I feel the best way to do that is to be able to um, to freelance or do some type of development in the future. And so figuring out what's the best for your future, you know, it, it for me that that's my big thing is I want I want to eventually be able to make more money and give my kids a life that I didn't have growing up. So um and yeah, I think that's really it. It just take it one day at a time and you'll have some days you might have three hours to code. And so, yay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I see an analogy like uh, for reading. So if you can read maybe one page per day, maybe you have five minutes, but it makes the difference because you build a habit to read. So I think it can be also the same for coding. If you just open your, maybe you, I don't know, update your ID, you, you, you check your project. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, if you check your project, maybe just two minutes, it's better than nothing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And one, one other thing is my six-year-old just yesterday told me she wants me to teach her how to code. So eventually wow. it might be something that you do together as a family. And I would love to teach my daughter how to do that so she can be even better than I am. You know, that's kind of <laughs> my goal as a parent is to raise my kids to be better than me. So I think... Wow. It can, it can also be a family activity depending on how, um, how old your kid is and if they're interested yeah. in this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And please, uh, oh, oh, um, one of your children, please uh, make him a DevOps engineer. Please uh, do that for me. We need uh, at <laughs> least one DevOps in the family. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that could be, that could be really a good, uh, good uh, idea. If, if, if that comes, ca- comes from them, Maybe the, yeah, it could be really great for you. I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, and they have they have toys these days that are like they're not computers, but they they're they make you follow steps. So they're, you're kind of learning how to code, not really code. You know, it's very very beginning, but you're learning that there's processes that have to be followed, and then ultimately you can kind of level up on the toys. And then there's um, yeah. some great kid coding online games where it teaches them how to code. So I'm actually probably going to start with that with my daughter. It's called Scratch and they build yeah. games and apps and things. Yeah. And I can also add that thing because when I was younger, I've touched it to volleyball to some young, yeah, so some kids, some children, and then some adult, uh, adults and older uh, people. And uh, yeah, the people that are younger, they learn way faster. For them, it's so natural because, yeah, they just do things. They don't say, oh, why I should do that? It's hard for me. They just, they, yeah, they just do that. If I say to one child, try, to, try a backflip, but, uh, they, <laughs> they'll try that because, yeah, children yeah. are like that. And that could be, would be uh, really good for them in the future. So, yeah, especially if they're having fun and they're not stressed about it, and then yeah, they they're just gonna do it. And yeah, like, I think yeah, I think I, I think they could be better than me and the, from everyone else because, for example, I started uh, yeah coding seriously at uh, 32. I mean, I think so. Yeah, I think they can be way better, <laughs> way way yeah. way better. I'm so jealous of kids today because, like in high school now, they have a like in-depth coding classes that you can take and we had computer classes but nothing like that so kids today are set up there's some great 16 year olds on twitter that i follow that are they just are amazing Uh, and i like i am not as smart as them i it takes me a long time to learn something i'm not a genius you know i have to sit down and study it and some of the kids on twitter they just know it (laughs) yeah have you seen that um i i I can't remember her name but the yeah, there is a child like seven, seven, six or seven years old. She makes tutorials. Okay, <laughs> she gives yeah, me imposter syndrome because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she makes a lot. Sometimes she makes also videos. I can't remember her name now, but uh, not just yeah. coding, but sometimes she explains things. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this, so, so much time to to try to explain something, and for them, it's so natural. It's yeah, yeah. it's like it's like skying from them. Yeah, yeah, from there yeah, to learn something when you're young, it's, it's a total different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, thank you, thank you for being here. Yeah, sometimes Thanks I've seen, I've seen, sometimes I've seen your your cat behind you, maybe just the ears, maybe <laughs> the black ears. Yeah. 
Yes, that's her down there. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. She's my yes, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, so Sara, thank you for being here. This has been really a pleasure. Good luck with everything. I, I in my opinion, your time management is uh, is very good. So for, for yeah. Yeah, I so, don't feel like it is, but thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but yeah, you are trying to do the best, in my opinion, yeah. because uh, trying to do 10 minutes, five minutes, uh, it makes the difference. It does. Go with it that. Uh, be strong. You need to wait. Uh, as you said, I, I hope that maybe in the future you, you could schedule something. You can do, yeah. But uh, what you're doing down now will pay off uh, in the future. So it so, will. Well, yeah. Hey, thanks yeah. for having me, Francesco. This was a lot of fun yeah. talking. To you yeah, today. and I'm looking forward to be a guest of your podcast. So yes. whenever you start, you send me a message. I, and if I say no, you, you say no, no. Now you now you need you to told come. Me you would. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so I'll be so yeah so I'll be there. Um, yeah, thank you again. Yeah. Thanks, Francesco. Yeah. Bye bye, Sarah. Bye bye. Don't close. Wait. <laughs> I, I think it's.